Now, Kieran Mooney was a talented young athlete when he collapsed while out running with a friend. Doctors could only describe what happened as a heart attack. Hi, my name is Kieran Mooney, 24 years of age, and I'm from Glasgow. But my job just now is not related to anything to what I did at university. I think that's probably the case for many people. Got a marketing and management degree and kind of stumbled into the wacky world of football. So um, participation and engagement is the actual job title, but what that means, I don't know. I'm mostly working with young people players, young people across the country, so whether that's grassroots, up to kind of performance schools, elite uh, clubs, national squads, it's a real mix. It's a interesting job, it's one that keeps me on my toes, but it's really rewarding as well. Running's probably one of the biggest things in my life outside of, you know, work and church and all that sort of stuff. It's, you know, sometimes it feels like a part-time job the amount of time that I'm putting in the hours training. It's something that I've not done my whole life. Got into running when I was 17, 16, 17, put on a little bit of weight coming out of football and my mum, who is, you know, my inspiration in running, she's a lot better runner than I'll ever be, so uh, she used to get me to run up the hill, up and down, every night. I used to go at nine o'clock at night where no one could see me. Uh, and it's just kind of snowballed in from, from that. Off the back of that, joined Giffnet North, a running club, and, and now compete to, uh, yeah, pretty pretty decent standard, I would like to say. But um, yeah, it's a, it's more than a hobby, I would, I would call it now. So I've got incredibly high standards. Every time that you run a PB or every time that you get one of these medals or trophies or whatever is you know a massive sense of satisfaction I'd probably say like the biggest one was this one here like winning the Giffnet North Club champs that that club to me was always a, a level I would never be able to reach in a really hard year of training and racing and putting the the graft in and and thankfully I managed to to win it and become the youngest person to do it as well so that was a bit of a, a proud moment for me and prob that would be my, my highlight so far. It's definitely not plain sailing. I would say that running is one of the most unattractive sports to get yourself involved in. There's a lot of times where it's lonely, a lot of time where it's, you know, you're, you're isolated and you're in dark places it's, and your mind takes you to all sorts of avenues and, and things like that. There's been bad races and bad blocks of training and and it's just that perseverance to get out of that. But I suppose for me, the headline low point in my running career would be when I had my heart attack when I was 18. Most 19 year olds take going out for a run for granted. For Kieran, every time he steps out his front door, it's a blessing. He doesn't remember much about that night in late August or indeed the weeks before. It was absolutely frightening, to be honest. I remember getting dragged into my grand's house and uh, they were kind of asking me questions like, what day of the week is it? I was couldn't think of any days of the week, let alone this day of the week. And I was fully aware of the concept of what was happening, the panic that was happening around me, but not being able to to piece together simple things like that, like even what's your name? You know, he was conscious, but he was slurring his words. He wasn't fully aware of his, his situation. Um, my focus was just to keep him conscious. But, um, but other than that, I think um, we were in a very, very sort of dangerous situation at that point. Um, but thankfully the car came. So if we were to go back before all this happened, how far did you want to take your running? I, I'm a very ambitious person, so I was probably, maybe stupidly would say, all the way. But um, this has kind of been a bit of an eye-opener for me. When I had my heart attack, uh, it was completely out of the blue, I think, when an 18-year-old that is fairly fit, has a heart attack, there doesn't seem to be that many logical reasons as to why it happens. So it was a very scary night and there was a lot of kind of drama and hospital and a lot of doctors. And 
a lot of unanswered questions as well. We never really got to the bottom of why I had the heart attack or whether it was going to happen again. So there was a lot of unknown as well, but all amongst it, there was doctors telling me that you can't run, you're not going to be able to do that. But on the flip side, there was a little bit inside my head that was determined to prove people wrong and, and thankful for the network of friends and family and, and coaching staff that I was, was able to get to get back to it but I think when someone tells you you can't do something it makes you more determined to do it and obviously that wasn't plain sailing and there was a lot of doubt and a lot of fear in that as well but you pull on your strength from somewhere else and and you just yeah put your faith in something else and, and hope that you're going to be okay and here I am and I'm, I'm back competing so it must have been must have been true. Yeah, being a Christian, especially in running and in football as well, but more so in, in running, has is, is definitely helped me in, in good account. And was, we talk a lot in the Bible about discipline. Um, there's a, you know, a chapter in uh, verses in Hebrews that said, you know, discipline is, is painful, but the reward at the end is, is fantastic. And that's kind of what running is like. Um, I, I mentioned previously about those you know, runs at six o'clock in the morning in the pouring rain and nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to run six days a week in all sorts of weather, but, you know, the reward is, is good. And obviously that's to a much greater scale when we're talking about the, the kingdom of God. But I think in, from where I came from and my heart attack to the level that I'm at just now, it's, it was, yeah, a lot of doubt and a lot of kind of fear of what will happen if it happens again. Am I strong enough to, to do it? Am I mentally strong enough or can my body take it? And putting those doubts and putting those fears and just placing them in God's hands has, has given me that assurance. You know, Isaiah 40 is one of my favourite verses in the, in the Bible. Um, it talks about being able to soar like eagles' wings and things like that and run without growing weary. And I wish that I could run without <laughs> physically without having that sort of pain. But, you know, that metaphor is exactly how I feel like to go from the lowest point of my life and the weakest point physically, putting my faith in God, building myself up with him by my side. It's got me to the point now where I feel strong mentally and physically every time I told that that start line. There's things that I want to achieve in, in terms of the minutes that I run, but I think it's, I've always placed where I want to be in terms of the inspiration that my mum was in running and the, the accolades that she got and the representation at a national level that she got. And those are sort of things that I aspire to be, but I think my faith and, you know, everything that's happened in the past, it's, it gives you sort of a kind of check outside of running as well that it's not the be all or end all that you end up with your name on a on a trophy at the end of it that there is that end goal after this discipline is, is so much bigger than than a gold medal so it's something that is definitely a high aspiration of mine to get further and further up the national ladder but it's not the it's not the be all or end all my heart attack was a bit of a, a hurdle to my faith i'm not gonna beat around the bush. There was a lot happening in my life at that point that made me raise questions about God and about what it was that I believed in. And, and you know, it's that classic, why is all these things happening to me when I've tried to be faithful and I've tried to be, you know, a good servant. And all of us have probably had, or many of us have had those doubts throughout the throughout their, their Christian walk. But it's only in the that when you come out of the hard times and you're persevering during the hard times that you realise that you're not doing it off your own strength. If you were to do, if you were to overcome a heart attack and get back into a level of competitive running all by yourself, you know, you'd be doing extremely well. I had to pull mentally and physically on a strength that I couldn't physically do myself. I had to pull on a, on a strength from God and he gave me a lot of reassurance, a lot of security and, and the physical strength to, to get back and do it. So it's only when, sometimes it's only when I came out of that situation that I realised that, you know what, I actually can't take credit for any of this recovery. I can't take credit for any of, you know, these medals that I've managed to get myself back to. This is God bringing me back up. This is God strengthening me again. And 
yeah, it's another thing I'm extremely, extremely grateful for. This incident has given me, like I say, a completely different perspective of how valuable life is and I don't want to get too doom and gloom but we never know when that day is going to come when it's, when it's your time here is up and I think that's given me a whole different perspective in cherishing every single day that we've got like it is your last and I know that's cliche but for me it very nearly was um, and grasping those opportunities to learn more, to get closer to God, to serve, all those sorts of things, those are opportunities that we should be looking to seize every single day because like I say, it does, you don't know when it's going to be your, your last day. But I think for me, I've tried to raise awareness in that space for a long time. The, the area that affected me in terms of my heart has become more and more prominent in elite sport. We've seen it most notably, I suppose, in, in football with you know some major people like Christian Eriksen and Fabrice Mwamba, guys at the very top, top of their game being, you know, unfortunate to have these sorts of cardiac arrests. And we've done a lot of work, myself and my friends and my family, and, and raising awareness with alongside Chest Heart and Stroke Scotland, British Heart Foundation to put on these sorts of events and social media awareness to to let young people know that it that might happen to them as well and it doesn't if you follow a healthy lifestyle doesn't necessarily make you immune to it so i think it's kind of two prong it's making the most of every day that you've you've got and and seizing those opportunities daily but also yeah there, there's ways to to live your life there's things that we can do to hopefully you know, make us less likely to fall into to unfortunate incidents like that.